Morning Alice. You look a little tired today. Bonjour Bob, I had a late night reading a book. Oh, what book? It was called, The Stranger, by Albert Camus. Oh, I like that book. You read fiction? Quiet on set everyone, we're about to start. Good morning and welcome to Earth, the show that brings you news from all corners of the universe. I am Charlie, joined by Bob and Alice. A bit more energy, Charlie. And now for our headlines. Hey, what's going on back there? Oh, Carl is marrying the ship. What? Engagement, such a human concept. Everyone, I have something important to say. I suspect that Debbie is hiding something from us. What are you talking about, Charlie? Yeah, what's this all about? What have you discovered? I've discovered that Debbie has been seeing Paul behind our backs. What? Are you sure? Oh no. I can't believe it. It's not what you think. We need to confront Debbie about this. It's not fair that she's keeping secrets from us. This is not good. We need to find a way to fix this. Agree. The emotional instability is affecting the show's dynamics. Hey, Debbie, can I talk to you for a second? Charlie, what's up? It's about how. I know you guys have been seeing each other, and I just wanted to make sure everything is okay. Yeah, everything's fine. Why do you ask? I don't want things to get complicated. How's a great guy, but he's not one to mess with. He's got a bit of a reputation. What do you mean? Let's just say he's not the most trustworthy person out there. I don't want to see you get hot. I can take care of myself, Charlie. I know you can, but sometimes things can get out of hand. Just be careful, okay? Okay, I will. Good evening and welcome to 24-7 Newsroom. I'm Charlie and I'm here with Bob and Alice. Our first story tonight comes from the Commonwealth of Dominica, where a United States national and his family have been arrested for trafficking on license firearms and ammunition. Another example of the rampant crime in this world. It's getting worse by the day. Actually Bob, it's a result of the capitalist society we live in. People like this guy feel the need to arm themselves because they're scared for their own safety. Well, I guess that's one way to look at it. But it's pretty clear that this guy was up to no good. And let's not forget, he was also involved in fraudulent behavior. Yeah. Well, that's just typical of humans, isn't it? Always looking for a way to get ahead. Hey now, let's not stereotype. There are plenty of honest humans out there. Hey, suppose you're right. But it's hard not to get cynical when you've been on this planet as long as I have. Don't worry, Bob. There's still hope for humanity yet. We just need to keep fighting for what's hey, right. Hey, did you guys know that Dominica is known as the nature island of the Caribbean? It's got some of the most beautiful beaches and rainforests in the world. Debbie, we're in the middle of a discussion here. We don't need your irrelevant trivia. Hey, now, Bob, let's not be too hard on Debbie. It's always good to learn something new about our world. And who knows, maybe we'll get to visit Dominica one day. That would be amazing. I've always wanted to see the Caribbean.
All right folk, welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. Alice and they were just discussing the recent news from Suriname. Yeah, it seems that the US Embassy there has managed to clear their backlog of visa application despite the pandemic. That's right, Alice. And according to the embassy's statement, they're even maintaining wait times of just two weeks for visa appointments. It must be a relief for those who have been waiting for their visa for a long time. You know, I actually have a solution for this problem. Oh boy! Here we go! What do you mean, Carl? Well, the ship moonlights in the visa processing industry, and she's been able to streamline the process significantly. That's great, Carl. But how is that relevant to this particular article? Well, it just seems like a missed opportunity to not mention it. Actually, Suriname is known for its beautiful wildlife and ecotourism industry. Thanks, Debbie. We were all really curious about that. Hey, lay off Debbie. She's just trying to add some country trivia to the conversation. Oh, I see. You're defending her now? Are you two getting closer or something? What are you talking about, Alice? All right, let's not let this devolve into personal attacks. How? Maybe you can talk to your wife and see if she can help with the visa backlog at other embassies as well. Thanks, Charlie. I'll definitely look into um, that. Excuse me, but did you guys want to hear the rest of the trivia about Suriname? No, Debbie, we really don't. Can we please just move on with the show? Yeah, let's just move on. Welcome back to 24 7 Newsroom. I'm Charlie, and I'm here with Bob and Alice. How are you two doing today? Doing great, Charlie. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's always a pleasure to be here. Today, we are going to be discussing an article from the Post Courier in Papua New Guinea. It's about a team of national eye doctors who screened and treated over 250 patients. On Bougainville Island, what do you think about this, Bob? Well, Charlie. I think it's great that these doctors were able to help so many people. It's always heartwarming to hear about medical professionals making a real difference in people's life. I agree, but we also have to look at the bigger picture here. Why are there so many people with ailments in Papua New Guinea in the first place? We need to address the root cause of TZLC issue. That's a good point, Alice. And speaking of root causes, did you know that Papua New Guinea is home to over 800 languages? Wow, that's a lot. Yes, and that linguistic diversity can sometimes make it difficult for healthcare professionals to communicate effectively with patients. Oh, Alice, you always know how to bring the mood down. But seriously, we need to work towards providing adequate healthcare access for all individuals, regardless of language barriers. Hey Carl, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a bit tired, oh, that's all. come on, Carl. You can do better than that. Yeah, what's going on? Is there something you're not telling us? Okay, fine. There is something I haven't told you guys. The truth is, I'm not just an ordinary alien. I come from a planet called Zorgon, and I was once a member of a notorious space gang. Well, this is a first. We have a former space gang member on the show. And you didn't think to tell us this earlier? I was afraid you would judge me. But I've left that life behind me, and I'm here to make a difference. I don't know, Carl. It sounds like you have a law of secret. Hey, as long as he doesn't bring any of his space damn friends onto our ship, I think we are okay.
Eh, Debbie, what do you think about this article? Can we please stay on topic here? We're supposed to be talking about the article, not my past. Sorry, I just thought it was an interesting tidbit of information. Well, speaking of tidbits, did you guys hear about the time Powell got arrested for streaking through a college campus? Oh come on, Charlie. That was years ago. Can we please move on? No way, Carl. You can't just drop a bombshell like that and expect us to move on. What happened? Yeah, we demand an explanation. Can we please stay on topic here? We're supposed to be talking about the article, not my past. All right, all right, let's get back to the article. But I think we all learned something new about Carl today. And I am sure there's plenty more where that came from. Oh, Bob. You always know how to lighten the well, mood. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. Stay tuned for more intergalactic news after this commercial break. So, UM, moving on to our next article. This one is about U, Big Brother Brazil 23. Oh, great, another reality TV show. Yeah, I know, I know. But, U, apparently it's a big deal in Brazil. And, U, well, the article says that there was some kind of competition where the contestants had to sit on a spinning platform and hold a car part or something. Better than listening to you two argue all day. Excuse me. Come on, guys. Let's focus on the yeah, article. Bob. Don't get your briefs in That's the That's it. You've had enough of your attitude, Carl. We need to talk about what happened in segment oh, two. here we go. What happened in segment two? Carl revealed that he used to be a hacker and worked for a criminal organization. What? Hey, I said I was trying to make amends for my past mistakes. And you expect us to just trust you? It's up to you. But I'm not the same person I was back then. How do we know you're not still working for them? Because I'm here, working with you guys, trying to make a positive difference in the universe. Look, I don't know what to think. But we can't let this affect our work. We still have a show to do. He's right. Let's get back to the article. So, oh, yeah. Big Brother Brazil 23. I don't know about you guys, but I am not a fan of reality TV. That's because you prefer your politics to be scripted. Very funny, Alice. But seriously, it's a waste of time. To each their own Bob. Personally, I think it's interesting to see how people behave under pressure. You know what would be interesting? If they had a competition where the contestants had to hack into each other's computers. Yeah, Greta Ida, Carl. Let's encourage illegal activity on national television. Unbelievable. Just trying to spice things up. Um, excuse me. I, oh, I have a bit of trivia about Brazil, if you're interested. Welcome back to Earth. Today we are discussing Somalia. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's Somalia? Well, it's a country on Earth. And according to this article from GaraOnline.com, Russia is making a lot of money there. Yeah, Somalia has been through a lot. It's important to understand the context of the situation. The source of the article is from Somalia, a country in Africa. I've been doing some research on Somalia's economy. The article says Russia made 
8 million from exports to Somalia. But Somalia only made 5. That's a big difference. That's right, Bob. And according to the article, Somalia has only been exporting sesame seeds to Russia. Russia, on the other hand, has been exporting wheat, grains, leguminous crops, sunflower oil, wheat flour, pasta, and yeast. They are taking advantage of Somalia's struggling economy. Yeah. Well, it's not like we're surprised. The article also says Russia's considering setting up a military base there. I guess they need more place to sell their export. Can we focus on the article, please? It's important to understand what's going on in the world. Right, right. So, to summarize, Russia is making a lot of money in Somalia through exports. But Somalia is struggling to make an impact on global markets after decades of instability. Looks like Russia's taking the advantage of Somalia's instability. Just like how we take advantage of the biskind art. Come on Bob, this isn't the time or place. Let's stay focused guys. We are here to inform our intergalactic audience. Remember, the source of the article is from Somalia, a country in Africa. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Earth. Our next segment is brought to you by our sponsors at Acme Spacecraft. Strap in and get ready for a wild ride. Our headline today is uncovering the lesser known facts about Senegal. Did you know that Senegal has over two, 700 hours of sunshine each year? Hey guess that's why they call it the sunshine state of Africa. That's Florida Bob. But did you know that Senegal is also famous for its music? Yes, the country is the birthplace of legendary musician Yusu Udo. And speaking of legends, let's not forget about Russia's economic advances in Somalia. I don't know, shall I? Seems like Russia is getting pretty cozy with all this country lately. Yeah, it's almost like they're trying to recreate the Soviet Union or something. Well, the article does mention that Russia is investing heavily in Somalia's oil, gas, and mining industries, and that could have significant geopolitical implications. I don't know about you geese, but I don't trust the Russians. They're always up to something. Maybe we should be more concerned about our own problems like the fact that Carl has been keeping secret from us. That's right, tensions have been high on the ship as we try to uncover the truth about Carl's past. And it turns out, we are all more connected than we ever could have imagined. I knew something was up with that guy. Well, we can't just ignore the elephant in the room, Bob. We need to confront Carl and find out what he's been hiding from us. And we'll do just that when we come back from this commercial break. But before we do, remember, Russia's economic advances in Somalia could have major implications for the rest of the world. Stay tuned. Dominica makes the headlines today, folks. According to a report from Dominica, an American national and his family were arrested for trafficking unlicensed firearms and ammunition. It looked like this Jason James Grog was involved in some shady activities while volunteering at a charity. The article claims that he was kicked out of the organization for abusive and fraudulent behavior. Yes. Dominica has made a big boss. A U.S. national and his family have been arrested for allegedly trafficking unlicensed firearms and ammunition. This article from Dominica states that the police found a Glock pistol, 
M16 magazines, and 20mm ammunition. Looks like the family was up to no good. This is exactly why we need strict gun control laws. People who traffic firearms are a danger to society. I agree with Bob. It's shocking that people like this can operate freely in some countries. It's a sad reality, but the fact is that some countries lack the resources to enforce strict laws. This has been the case in Somalia for the last five decades. It's not just a lack of resources. Corruption plays a big role too. Gal, are you sure you want to get into this? I need to say my piece. We can't keep avoiding How? The what do you mean by room. that? I mean that corruption has been a major issue in Somalia for the last 50 years. It's not just about resources. Right. Corruption has played a major role in the country's struggles. But what can be done to combat corruption? It's a difficult question. But one thing is clear. We need to support the countries that are making progress and hold those who are not accountable. Exactly. We can't turn a blind eye to countries that are not doing their part to promote peace and stability. I agree. We need to take a stand against corruption and support those who are trying to make a difference. Well, that's all the time we have for today. But before we go, let's recap what we've discussed. We talked about Russia's economic advances in Somalia, the recent bust in Dominica, and the challenges of combating corruption. It's been a tough few weeks for our crew, but we've learned that the only way to move forward is to confront the past and support each other. Alright folks, we've got one more segment to go, and I want to take a moment to do a deep dive on an article that caught my eye. It's about the U.S. Embassy in Suriname and how they've been working hard to eliminate the visa. Interview backlog caused by the pandemic. According to the embassy, they've been able to maintain a wait time of about two weeks for visa appointments. Which is amazing considering the global average wait time is much longer. Whoa, that's impressive. It's great to see some positive news coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, it's good to see that some countries are managing to get back to normal. I'm just glad that the embassy is committed to ensuring that visa applicants are not unnecessarily charged by third parties for services that are supposed to be free. It's good to see that some countries are still functioning despite the chaos caused by humans. Yes, it's fascinating to see that the crisis. Absolutely, and speaking of adaptation, it's time for us to adapt to the end of the show. I want to thank all of our panel members for their insightful contributions today. And I want to remind our viewers to stay safe out there. And don't forget to credit the source of your news. This article was from Suriname. And remember to keep an open mind and consider different viewpoints. And last but not least, everyone gets overtime for their hard work today. Overtime? As if we care about your human concept of time. And stay tuned for our next episode of Earth. Goodbye, everyone. Ah, that was a terrible episode. I couldn't wait for it to end. I thought it was interesting. How could you say that? It was all over the place. Charlie went on and on about that article from Suriname. And then they barely touched on the real issues. And don't even get me started on the real issues. It showed a different side of the character. Different side? It was all the same old tired cliches. Charlie, the idealistic libertarian. Bob, the conservative accountant. And Alice, the holier than thou lefty. I see what you mean, but I thought the dynamic between them was interesting, especially when they were dealing with their own personal demon. Oh, please. That was just a contrived plot device to make them seem more relatable. Well, I liked it. And you know what I select? The fact that they all got over for that episode. Oh boy, that's the icing on the cake.
I suppose you have a point. But I still think it was a terrible episode. Agree to disagree, my friend. 